Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Canadian Young Physicist Tournament's channel. It has been a long time since I made a problem-related video. A lot has happened since the last video. We finished our national tournament. COVID-19 forced many of us to stay at home. Our IPT 2020 is cancelled. Despite being in this difficult time, I still want to meet my commitment of making a video for all the IYPT 2020 problems. This is because in many places, selective tournaments are postponed, and there are still discussions about using the same problem for 2021. I thought I would do my part to help by providing my ideas for your reference. Thank you so much to all my friends, collaborators, and subscribers. It is your support that motivates me in this endeavor. And shout out to the IYPT 2019 WhatsApp group for organizing the Zoom chat. I really admire what you guys did for the community. Today we'll look at IYPT 2020 problem 11, Drifting Speckles. The problem statement tells us that when we shine a laser beam onto a dark surface, a granular pattern can be seen inside the laser spot. When we observe the spot using a camera or our eyes and move slowly, the pattern seems to drift relative to the surface. The problem wants us to explain the phenomenon and to investigate how this drift depends on relevant parameters. Before we do any experiments, I must warn you, laser radiation can be very dangerous to your eye. If the laser power is high, even diffuse reflection could cause blindness or light things on fire. The laser dials that you can buy are often way above their rate of power. Please make sure that you can control the beam path and wear eye protection if necessary. To set up my experiment, first I taped a piece of black construction paper to the wall. I made a small square using white masking tape to form a target box. Beside the background, I set up a light stand with a photography magic head. In it, I clamped my laser pointer. I really like this laser pointer since it has a switch that turns the laser diode on continuously. This setup is rigid enough that I know exactly where the beam will be. If you want to use a laser pointer that is more powerful, mounting it will be required. I think a diode laser is fine for this experiment. Although it's not very coherent, it is still much better than your regular light. The coherence length measures how far the wave could stay in phase. From what I've read, the coherence length of these diode lasers is about 2 mm. So it's really not practical to place a laser that close to the background. In order to move the camera controllably, I set up a camera slider system. The slider is essentially a carriage on a pair of rails. The conical roller rolls on these cylindrical rails and permits smooth sliding. On the slider, I mounted a tripod head. It could pan or tilt the camera to accurately frame the shot. On the camera, we need a lens. A lens that allows for manual aperture and focus is convenient. The aperture of the lens is the hole that you see when you look through the lens. It controls how much light lands on the sensor. The focus ring of the lens essentially controls how much the lens system bends the light. Focusing at infinity means that the lens system bends parallel light rays so that they converge on the sensor. Close focus means that it bends diverging light rays and allows them to converge onto the sensor. Notice how I refer to a camera lens as a lens system. This is because inside the lens there are many lens elements in several groups with different coatings that all work together to not only form an image on the sensor, but also corrects aberrations and distortions, reduces unwanted reflections, and enhances light transmission. This is a vast topic in itself. If you're interested, you can check out the hundreds of photography YouTubers that review every single lens that you could possibly buy. Enough about the setup, let's take a look at what we see through the lens. If we just focus on the background, we only see a tiny laser dot. This is exactly what we expect. The laser beam hits the background in a very tiny region and scatters off in all different directions because the surface is rough. This is what we call diffuse reflection. Some of the light that enters the lens is spent just the right amount so that it converges onto the sensor again. The real show starts when we throw the spot out of focus. Let's dim the light and focus close. We see the spot 
grows in size and we can resolve the details of the speckle pattern. If we begin to slide the camera, the speckle will move with the camera. What we are seeing is referred to as a subjective speckle. The light reflects off of a rough surface and it is effectively projected onto the image sensor by the lens. What's interesting is that these speckles are not formed on the background, it is actually formed on the image sensor itself. Don't believe me? Let's do a thought experiment. If the speckle is on the background, it is like a picture taped to the wall. When we move the camera, the speckles should follow the laser spot and move with it at the same speed. In the near focus case, although the speckles move in the same direction as the spot, they move at different rates. The speckles fly by at very fast speeds, while the spot itself moves very slowly. It is almost like motion parallax, because it sort of is. The spot and the background is far away, but the speckles are right on the sensor. To make sure that it's not our illusion, we can pick a spot and track it in software. We see that the speckles move at speeds in order of magnitude faster than the spot. If we shift to far focus, the spot and speckle don't even move in the same direction. The spot looks more like a searchlight. Another evidence suggesting that the speckles are formed on the sensor can be seen when we close down the aperture. Suppose for a contradiction that the speckles are not on the sensor. The fact that we can see it clearly means that it is in focus. This implies that it is located somewhere from 0 meters to infinity. We don't know exactly where it is. Now, what will happen if I close down the aperture? Normally when we take a photograph, closing down the aperture will make the image dimmer. But we won't cause the image to be reduced to only a small circle. This is because when we focus on an object, all the light that reflects off of the object that enters the lens are focused onto the sensor. By closing down the aperture, we're blocking a portion of the light, making it dimmer. So here on the left, I have two point light sources. Here I have a converging lens. And here we have two movable barriers that will act like my aperture. And here we have a plane, and this will be my sensor plane. So as you can see, right now both of these point light sources are focused right on the sensor plane. And now, if I just close down the aperture, you see we can still see these two point sources of light, but it's just that less light is going through the lens, and so the image gets dimmer. And in fact, this also works if this is not on axis, right? So if we just change the aperture so that the light passes through the bottom portion of the lens, that is still fine. So we just have a tiny amount of light going through, but both of these points are still projected onto the sensor. Therefore, our image is complete. So this is why even if you crack this piece of lens, only having a part of it, we're still able to see a complete image. Here we see that when we make the aperture smaller, the laser spot is cut off from the outside in. This implies that our previous assumption about the speckles being in focus is wrong. If the speckles really were an image on the background, we will see a uniform dimming of the entire spot, but this is not the case. The light from the laser spot is not focused on the sensor, it is simply a blob of light that happens to interfere on the sensor plane. So when we close down the aperture, the entire laser spot gets smaller rather than dimmer. This makes sense because no matter where we position the camera, near or far, the speckles are always sharp because it is formed on the sensor. I hope you liked this video. I really enjoyed doing this experiment and researching about it. I might do a few more optics related videos while I still have everything set up. Wish everyone stay safe and healthy. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.